today we'll have a look at some linear algebra routines okay and how do you do various kinds of linear algebra using openmp how do you parallelize these codes so as you know these codes like solving a system of linear equations uh, matrix operations these occur in a lot of scientific computations right we'll focus on some simple operations in this course and then we'll see how we can parallelize these operations using openmp so let's start with something very simple at the most basic level right there are three different categories of uh, linear algebra operations so there's actually a library called blast basic linear algebra subroutines right and this is heavily used in a lot of scientific computations so what are the different kinds of uh, linear algebra operations that you see so the first category is this is called blast level 1 right this is essentially vector or vector vector kind of operations okay like uh, scaling a vector finding the euclidean norm or computing the dot product of two vectors right then you have blast level 2 and this uh, primarily constitutes of matrix vector operations right so finding the product of a matrix and a vector and there are lo loads of other operations like triangular solve and so on and the third category is matrix matrix operations okay and the simplest example of this is matrix multiply right you want to multiply two matrices and get the results and it's interesting that a lot of scientific computations can actually be performed uh, using all the operations that are available in blast okay so you can solve a system of linear equations uh, using these routines and and a whole lot more okay at the end of the day you are doing a lot of matrix or matrix vector kind of operations okay all right so let's uh, start with some very simple blast one level routines uh, so the simplest one is well let's i'm not going to obviously go through all the uh, routines that there are but you can you can go to the net and find out more about these but uh, i'll just cover a few as uh, examples and show you how you can parallelize them okay so let's start with dot product right so this is something we've already seen so what do we want to do we are given two vectors a and b and we want to compute the dot product right so we want to compute y equal to a dot b right we've actually already done this so let's first write the sequential code what will the sequential code look like so suppose you are given the size of the vectors in a variable n right and now you compute the dot product as follows simple loop for i is equal to 0 i is less than n i plus plus and you simply say dot plus equal to ai times bi right and initially you're going to initialize this dot to 0 and we're going to assume that all of these are floating point double precision floating point numbers so all of these are of type double in c right so unless specified otherwise we'll just assume all data to be of type double So if I want to parallelize this how do I do that So let me make some space So here's the simplest way I can do this using openmp so I just put a hash pragma here Right so you recall what this does right So this is a combination of two different directives hash pragma omp parallel and hash pragma omp for right i've combined them together into a single directive so what will this do this will distribute this loop amongst the threads whatever you've set as the number of threads right it's going to launch that many threads and distribute this loop to the different threads but how does it do the distribution so you can actually specify how you want that to be done by using a clause it's called the schedule clause so you can say schedule static or dynamic okay and you can specify chunk size so what static does is that 
it basically divides the iteration statically amongst the threads right it's not figured out at runtime it's done before that only at compile time only it's fixed that which thread is going to do what work right for instance if your array is of size 100 and let's say that there are four threads if n is equal to 100 and there are four threads it's going to give 0 to 24 to thread number 1 20, sorry thread number 0 25 to 49 to thread number 1 and then 50 to 74 to thread number 2 and 75 to 100 to sorry 99 to thread number 3 okay it's going to do that statically now if you want it to be done differently right so let's say you want smaller chunks you want to give work in units of let's say 10 then you can specify chunk size as 10 so if you say schedule static comma 10 what it's going to do is it's going to give 0 to 9 to thread 0 10 to 19 to thread 1 20 to 29 to thread 2 30 to 39 to thread 3 and then back here 40 to 49 and so on okay it will just distribute it round robin all right but typically what you want is you don't want to statically say that which thread is going to do what right depending on the way the threads are scheduled some threads may get freed up early and some threads may have a lot of work still remaining right depending on the order in which they are scheduled that's not in your control so what you would ideally like to do is let the runtime figure out at runtime let it figure out that which is the thread which is free whichever thread is free let it pick up the next chunk of work right let me not statically assign the work to these threads so then what i can do is i can just specify the schedule as dynamic all right so if i say schedule dynamic and if i use a reasonable chunk size let's say chunk size of 10 if your uh, schedule is dynamic it will give 0 to 9 to some thread whichever is free it might be any thread let's say it's thread 0 then 10 to 19 may go to thread 3 maybe that's uh, it finds that that thread 3 is free at that time and then 20 to 29 it finds thread 2 is free and then uh, 30 to 39 to thread uh, 1 and then 40 to 49 uh, maybe it's thread 3 is the one which has freed up first it's completed its work right so it's going to give it to thread 3 so it figures it out dynamically that whichever thread is free let me figure that out and give it some work okay and you don't want to make the chunk size too small also right if you make it a chunk size of one or something and let's say that it's a very small loop which doesn't do a whole lot of work if it's doing some considerable amount of work right it's taking some time within each iteration then it's okay to set a chunk size of one uh, but if, if let's say all you're doing is a multiplication of two numbers right and you're setting a chunk size of one the overhead of uh, you know giving the work allocating the work and so on is going to be more than the operations being performed inside so you don't want to set a chunk size which is too small so if we want to compute the dot product how would i ideally want to divide up the vectors would a chunk size of 1 be good would a chunk size of 100 be good according to the cache size why is cache important in dot product so one of two things has to happen for cache to be effective right either data has to be contiguous which you are accessing or you are reusing data so in this case are we reusing data no right when you are reusing data then cache size is very very important because you want to fit as much data into the cache so that you can reuse it and it still stays in the cache it doesn't it doesn't get out of the cache right for instance in matrix multiply if you multiply two very big blocks right then the data is bound to get out of the cache in dot product we are visiting each element only once so there's no reuse is that that point clear so i'm not going to benefit by cache reuse but the locality is going to come into play so once you load some data it loads the entire cache line right and then i'm going to access the other elements of that cache line because i'm accessing data contiguously Right, so that's where the cache comes into play but for that the cache size is not important right the cache line size is important what is the size of one cache line does it load four elements in a cache line or eight elements in a cache line that is important because that's the number of accesses that you will now find in the cache right but the total cache size is not important okay that's important more when you are doing reuse of data from the cache so there's another interesting thing that happens with caches right so what modern day architectures support is something called streaming 
right? Or kind of prefetching. If you are accessing data sequentially, right, which happens in the case of dot product or scaling a vector, whenever you are accessing a vector, right, you are accessing data sequentially. So that's called streaming. You are working on a stream of data, right? So if you are accessing data sequentially, uh, contiguously, then what it does is that it's able to figure that out. Maybe you access the first element, it got it into the cache, but it got that entire cache line, right? Now you access this element, you access this element, you access this element, and then you again access the next sequential element. And at that time, it picked up this entire data and put it in the cache line, right? You access this element, this element, this element. So now it's able to figure out after about maybe you fetch two cache lines or something, right, of sequential data. The architecture is able to figure out that you are accessing data sequentially. It, it's intelligent enough. And now what it starts doing is, without you accessing the next element, it will start automatically prefetching it into the cache. So even that one element latency that you used to incur, right, of when when you used to run out of the cache line and the next element you would you would have to make a memory access, you would incur a memory latency. Even that is gone. It's able to figure out that you are accessing data sequentially and it automatically prefetches the data into the cache. Okay, so that's something called streaming prefetching, which you should be aware of. So it's always good to access data sequentially, contiguously. You really benefit with a lot of architectural features by doing that. Yeah, so how do we want to divide the work for a dot product? Right, how do I want to divide the processing of these vectors? How do I want to give some chunk to each thread to work on? Equally to all the threads, okay. So what is the disadvantage of that? So the only disadvantage is as we discussed that sometimes the threads are not able to get scheduled due to some reason or the other. What could be the possible reasons, right? So typically in all the operating systems that you run, there are demons that wake up from time to time and do something, maybe a clock interrupt, maybe some file system server, right? Networks, network device server and so on. So these demons wake up from time to time. And then if one of these demons wakes up, it, your thread is just not getting scheduled, right? So you're kind of like in wait mode. So maybe one of the threads does not get scheduled, right? So if you're doing equal distribution of work and one thread gets stuck, then your entire dot product computation is waiting for that thread to come back, to finish its work and come back. So what's a good alternative to that? What will I say, scheduled dynamic? And what should my chunk size be? Not one fourth of the total thing, right? So if I have, let's say, a million entries, right, that I want to compute the dot product over, 1000 or 10,000 would be good enough, right? I don't want to make it too small, I don't want to make it too large. If I make it too small, then the overheads of dynamic scheduling are going to play a bigger role. And if I make it too large, then I may not get good load balancing because at the end, the thread which has the longer work, right, it may get stuck and may come back late, okay? All right, so maybe I do with 1000, right? That's not a, an unusable thing to do. So essentially what am I doing? I'm just dividing this vector into chunks and then as and when a processor becomes free, it comes and, you know, accesses. Is it better than dividing it equally with a dynamic scenario? Dividing it equally in the dynamic scenario. Okay. Let's say we have two threads, right? So let's say that uh, each of these is a chunk of size 100. Right, and I have data which is divided into uh, three chunks of size 100. So now what happens is that there are 300 iterations. I've divided into three chunks, each of 100 iterations, and now I want to schedule this on the processes, right? So if I'm using chunk sizes of 100, what happens in that case? So let's say thread zero starts running this, and then thread one for some reason is not able to get scheduled for some time, right? So maybe about equivalent of doing 50 operations, half the time it's wasted it's not able to schedule the thread and finally it wakes up and it schedules a thread, right? And then at this point of time, thread zero becomes free and now it picks up that last piece of work and executes it, right? And again, this thread is sitting idle at this 
point in time not doing anything for another 50 let's say cycles right let's assume that one it takes one cycle for one iteration right so it's wasted 50 cycles here which we couldn't do anything about but this 50 cycles it has wasted right what would have happened if i had smaller chunks if i had chunks of 10 so what would have happened is that roughly 10 of those would have got scheduled here so you would have done 100 work here and till this point how much work would you have done so 100 work would have been done here 50 would have been done here 100 would have been done here right so about 250 units of work would have been done at this point in time and now how much work are you left with another 50 units but since your chunk size is 10 both of them schedule it together right and maybe this one schedules it longer so in in 30 units of time you're done whereas in this case you know 50 units got wasted so this seems small but even construct examples where this becomes larger and larger right so you could waste as much time as the size of the chunk if this job ended over here right let me construct another example so 100 units let's say that the first 10 units got free and then 100 units and then 100 units so what has happened around 90 units have got gotten wasted so smaller chunk sizes always help so with bigger chunk sizes there will always be one job whichever one schedules gets scheduled last the others get up get free they have to wait for that last one to complete and that could be as much as the length of that job the work the amount of work that that uh, thread has to do that chunk size right but with smaller chunk sizes that gets load balanced so everybody can share that work right but again you don't want to make it too small because if you make it too small then your overheads become significant So it has to do some work, right? So every time a chunk ends, so what does the compiler do? The compiler is going to substitute some code over there, which is going to check which threads are free, pick up a thread, allocate it the work dynamically, tell it that, okay, since you are free, why don't you do this work? How is that done? It has to fill up some data structures in the memory that, you know, tell that thread that, hey, pick up this information and start working, right? So all of that has to be done. So those are the overheads. And that it has to do every time one, chunk is completed right because it has to dynamically figure out at that time that uh, who am i supposed to give the next work to right so there's a processing involved over there that is the overhead we are talking about so is there an optimal way to select the chunk size is there an optimal way to select the chunk size let's say that i am doing 10 cycles worth of work in one iteration right and the overhead is about 40 cycles I mean, I'm just arbitrarily cooking up numbers. So this is the amount of work I'm doing in one iteration. So think of it as 10 nanoseconds and the overhead of doing the dynamic scheduling is 40 nanoseconds. Then I may want to at least schedule about, I want this to be 4,000 cycles, right? So that this becomes about 1% overhead. I don't want the overhead to be more than 1%. So I'll select this to be about 4,000 cycles, which means what? Which means about a chunk size of 400. Right? That's one way of doing it. You want to pick the smallest chunk size for which the overhead is not too large, right? Because smaller chunk size means that at the end you are going to get good load balancing amongst the threads. So you want to pick a smaller chunk size. So that was dot product. So the crux of the story is that we divided it up into lots of small, small pieces, maybe 100 elements or something each. I say schedule dynamic. So as and when a thread becomes free, it picks up one chunk and goes and does it. Right, and because there's at least 100 elements or let's say 1000 elements, right? It benefits out of the data locality, whatever it's loading in the cache and also the streaming comes into play, right? So it's able to get good performance, okay?